What is going on YouTube? Today I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about what is happening around Magic 30 and to ask the question, what the fuck is Watsy thinking? I think that there's been a lot of discourse around Magic 30. First off, the ticket prices for the festival were way, way too high for the average Magic player to come and enjoy. And that's just the tickets in the door. That doesn't count travel, hotel, food, any of the stay. Just to get in the door, there was, um, let me just bring up a browser real fast. Um, you were looking at plenty, plenty of options. There was, um, you know, single day tickets to kids passes to extreme VIP. The highest uh, cost to get into the door was $700 for the Black Lotus VIP package. If you wanted to play Commander or access the Commander area, you had to pay $350. Um, there's another VIP package for $350. Uh, the virtual ticket, which hasn't sold out yet because it's not offering a whole ton of stuff, uh, is $30. Then you've got a kid's ticket, which um, I believe is 14 and under. There. Doesn't see children age 5 and under are not eligible for merchandise. It doesn't say exactly what the kids price is for um but even the kids is fifty dollars and that's a full weekend which isn't too bad and then the cheapest full weekend package for players is a hundred and sixty dollars that's three days for the festival i believe at a hundred and sixty dollars you get a promo card, a booster pack, um, two Dominaria United collector boosters, and a playmat, and access to the show floor. There's single day uh, kids admission for twenty dollars, and single day admission for adults for sixty dollars. The Sunday was the last one available. The Saturday and Friday sold out really quickly. The it's it's really minimal. Um, inclusion in the ticket and it's quite pricey considering that most people will have to pay to get there as well as pay to attend the event then in order to celebrate magic 30 um they announced a 30th anniversary uh edition of cards comes in this little box and what you get is four 30th anniversary booster packs that's not guaranteed cards that's booster packs and what they include are old 30th anniversary cards from the original set and the best part about this entire joke is that it's a thousand dollars for four booster packs a thousand dollars that's not even guaranteed to get you a return on investment because they are booster packs and the chance of you getting the card you're looking for, which includes power nine cards, um, dual lands. It's, it's not even guaranteed. And then you take a look at the cards here. Um, they've got this nice retro frame, which is really cool. Uh, they have a normal modern frame as well, but obviously people are buying the 30th anniversary edition for the retro feel. Uh, so we're just taking a look at the retro frames here. This Birds of Paradise, original art by Mark Poole, the 30th anniversary edition. I have noticed a few people talking about the um, crops on the artist names in the newer borders. I guess they have to stretch out the art or shift the art a bit, crop it differently for the newer borders. So there are some really awkwardly cropped artist names on these new cards. Uh, we've got a lightning bolt. Uh, Christopher Rush did that one. 
You've got, you know, all of the main heavy hitters from Magic the Gathering's early eras. Demonic Tutor, Counterspell. Uh, you've got, again, the Power Nines, uh, Dual Lands. And the the most frustrating part is that the way they prepositioned this announcement was that this was for the fans. This was to celebrate Magic to celebrate our endearment to the franchise, our longstanding relationship with WotC, and to celebrate game stores. But they're only sending one of these to the game stores and three of them to game stores that are premium. So most likely game stores aren't going to be selling any. If they are, they're going to be selling them at a huge markup. And most likely they'll be opening these packs themselves and selling the singles. To add even more salt to the wound is that these cards aren't tournament legal. This, this Black Lotus here on the 30th edition is a proxy. That all of the cards in here have a special back. I'll show you um, the back. All of the cards have a special back right here. And this signifies that it is a proxy. What are they right here? We wanted a collectible, commemorative, jaw-dropping, mind-blowing thing that would cement itself in our collective memories as we look forward to the next 30 years of magic. And it's a proxy. People can't even play with these cards. So you're spending $1,000 on a chance to get an expensive card that isn't expensive because it's a proxy and it's a fake. A, a fake. Where's my camera? Fake. Um, I'm going to link to the professor, Tolarian Community College, had a really great video about this. One of the statements that really stood out to me was that this is a product for Watsi and no one else. This is just an opportunity for the company to make money off of people's nostalgia, and that is it. They're not celebrating players. They're not celebrating their history. They're not celebrating game stores. They're not celebrating the longstanding player-to-company competitive for fun social interaction that is Magic the Gathering, what they've done is they've spent 30 years saying, don't copy our cards. And then they've taken a bunch of cards on a list of cards they said they would never reprint and reprinted them in, in proxy form. I know that there's a lot of things that come out of, you know, fandoms and communities like this where the discourse ends up being, this is not a product for you. And I'm all for that argument. I don't think every product is for everybody. And I don't think that everyone should be clamoring to pick up these expensive proxies. What I do think is that this is by far and above the most not for everybody or really anybody product that I've ever seen. And granted, my relationship with magic has been minimal until recently where it has become a full-time part of my life. So this is definitely not a product for me because I have an understanding of magic's history, but don't necessarily have a strong desire to own all of these pieces. And it's definitely not a product for you know, the casual player, because there's no way you spend a $1,000 on, and maybe there is a way, but you shouldn't spend a $1,000 on cards you can't even play without the stipulation of, are we okay with proxies? If there's a rule zero conversation regarding your, I paid a $1,000 to open this card, then that's a bad business model. And sure, you might be interested in buying these. And as much as I don't want to say it, I have 100% belief that these will sell out. 
and Wizards is going to pat themselves on the back, think that they've done a great job, and we're going to move on to the next thing. They're going to make their money. They're going to think that this was a success. I urge you not to buy these. If you want to proxy these cards, there are many, many talented proxy artists online that you can get these cards from or simply print them out yourself. I don't think that I'm going to stand by firmly too many points or opinions that I have. I think I'm very flexible. I think that my opinions vary. I'm more than willing to be talked out of something. I'm more than willing to be talked into something. This is something I firmly firmly urge do not buy these do not buy a thousand dollar box of four booster packs for a chance at opening a proxy card of a rare alpha beta card this 30th edition is not for the fans it's not with players in mind and even the more affluent of magic players Magic collectors, competitive magic players. Th this isn't even for them because they can't play with these cards. So do yourself a favor. Find an awesome proxy artist. Definitely give the profs video um, a view. Make some great points. I, I really hope that there's some smaller things that Magic is doing, that WotC is doing with the Magic 30th anniversary. I think that there's... A lot to be desired in kind of everything that they've put together so far. I know that tickets sold out for Magic 30 really quickly. And a lot of that has to do with you guys. The community wants to get together. We want to play Magic. We want to celebrate this fandom. It has almost nothing to do with what, what Wizards of the Coast has put together for the 30th anniversary. And I hope that we can... Show them with our wallets that this product isn't for us and urge them to reconsider their thought process on designing celebratory packages for Magic players. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that um, I didn't dwindle on too much or, or waste too much time with superlatives. I think that this community is amazing. I've met so many great people uh, playing Magic the Gathering, and I urge you to you know, follow all the streamers, um, subscribe to all the YouTube channels, go on Twitter. There's lots of conversations, hype conversations. People are pumping each other up, talking about cool stuff on Twitter. Um, ignore all the negativity try to dissuade people you know from being negative and let's just get together and celebrate uh, magic's 30th anniversary on our own because we're what makes magic and this product isn't for us don't forget to like this video leave a comment in, uh, under the video here and let me know if what your take is on the 30th anniversary booster box I would love to know if you're interested in buying one and what kind of investment you think that that is. I know some people are talking about this potentially being a moneymaker in the future. So let me know in the comments, is there something from this pack of uh, these packs that you would love to open? Let me know that too. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, go be nice to each other. Put kindness out into the world, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.